Good evening, everyone. I apologize uh, for the delayed start, but I do appreciate all of you um, coming here this evening. I would like to call to order the Monday, March 4th meeting of the Quincy City Council Ordinance Committee. Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Councilor Kane. Present. Councilor Kroll. Present. Councilor DeBona. Present. Councilor Harris. Councilor Hughes. Councilor Mahoney. Present. Councilor McCarthy. Present. Councilor Palmucci. Present. Chairman Liang. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Now, the matter before us this evening is Council Order 2018-146, Ordinance Amending Title 17, Zoning Section 9.0, Site Plan Review. Um, I do just want to uh, point out to my colleagues and those who are watching or listening to this meeting that we did um, have some important dates leading up to this meeting. One was that it was advertised, um, this ordinance was advertised back on September 28th, 2018. There was a public hearing held on December 3rd, 2018. Um, that was advertised in the ledger. And then it also went to planning board where there was a public hearing held on November 14th, 2018, and it was closed uh, without issuing a positive or negative recommendation to the city council. Uh, that brings us here tonight. We were having an ordinance committee meeting. We're going to have a presentation uh, from the planning board, either by Mr. Fatsies or Mr. Stevens, who are both here to answer our questions after the presentation. Um, and with that, I would like to get started. So if either one of you would like to step up and make your presentation, that'd be great. Thank you, Chairman, to the rest of the council. Um, in conversation with uh, the, the sponsor of the bill, uh, Council Palmucci, we, we kind of went over the history of um, what the planning board has seen. Uh, he was clear that when the original recodification of the planning uh, ordinance was put into place at one point um, when the gentleman that was Dr. Brabowski, who was in charge of the recodification, one of the suggestions he made at the time is that perhaps the planning board might be better served if they were working on projects of 10 units or more. Um, that was prior to my, it was prior to the, the, the buildup that has occurred obviously uh, in the city and the amount of, uh, of, of projects that have come before the planning board. Uh, a few things also play into this, um, uh, and I've spoken to Council Palmucci on all of this, and he'll have a chance to ask me my, my thoughts or anything else that goes with that. Uh, my first concern was at 10 units, uh, that triggers, triggers the affordable trust. The, uh, you know, and, and what I was concerned is that uh, one of the other jobs I have is I'm the chairman of the Affordable Housing Trust. So what we concern ourselves with is anything of that nature, I think, is a, rises to a higher level of scrutiny. And then what we did is we went back and we pulled out what has transpired and what kind of planning board cases we've had since 2013, which is really the beginning of the activity that everybody would consider to be Quincy's building spurt, so to speak. And in doing so, we pulled out the projects that were in fact um, heard by the planning board. Uh, there were a number of uh, projects that had three units. Uh, there were six of them. There was 10 that had four, uh, four units, and then there was another six that had five units. In my conversations with uh, the councillor, I, I, I said my, my- Sorry, Mr. Fatsis, just to clarify, I'm sorry to interrupt you. So you said that there were six uh, projects at three units, 10 at four and six at five. That was since 2013? Since 2013. Okay, thank you. Okay. So what we're talking about are two things. Uh, and again, it's the volume of what goes before the planning board. I think the planning board has the opportunity to weigh in on all those things that are uh, really related to, to uh, stormwater, how the building looks, parking, and uh, basically site plan review. One of the concerns and one of the conversations I had with the counselor was, 
When you're down into two units, uh, we aren't looking at them now, uh, obviously. Uh, anything three or below, we're not looking at as the planning board uh, for site plan review. And as you start to go north, obviously, you're seeing larger, you're, you're seeing larger lots. So uh, I would tell you that the smallest, at looking at all these projects, the smallest uh, lot that was utilized was about a 5,000 square foot lot for three units. Uh, when you're smaller and you don't have as many parking, uh, when you have less units, obviously you don't have as many parking spaces. And largely what is a concern in the neighborhoods is setbacks. And setbacks are always something that, uh, you know, as a ward counselor, I'm sure you've all, the ward counselors have seen it. And I certainly know that uh, many of the at-large counselors come to planning board as well. So we were uncomfortable, and, and I would say that my suggestion at, at uh, looking at the data and speaking to uh, the planning board chair, who also served as a planning director in the past, is that we were uncomfortable not having oversight on, you know, at minimum, I would say that we should look at everything that has five units or, not, or more. Uh, when you get up into five units, you can see some larger lots. You can see some more activity on those sites. And generally speaking, there's just, it's a larger impact to the neighborhood because, again, you're going to see five units. Once you get up uh, to six units, there's no doubt in my mind that that's something that we have to take a hard look at. And we are at uh, the zoning board really looks at setbacks. That's, that's their world. In conversation with Mr. Duca, you know, we discussed this at well, as well. And, you know, there are some projects, I, I would say, that, you know, might be simple. They fit in. They have an abundance of land. And it's not something that uh, we worry about as much. But we're really talking about Res B here. And obviously, Res A is single homes. Once you go into Res B, and uh, I would say most of these projects, uh, there was only one project that was in Res C, and there was a couple in Res A, but they were really subdivisions. So they had the appropriate number of units, you know, four or more, but they aren't really what we're looking at in this particular case. Uh, so it, it's important to, to, to recognize that the more complex, the larger the project, the more there is going to be a need for real hard look at how they're going to do their stormwater treatment. The planning board has the ability to hire a peer review to look at these projects and literally break down the different pieces as it relates to parking, to stormwater management. Um, you know, I would say that every project, we like to see how it looks. We like to see how it fits into the neighborhood. But those are the two major issues that we look at. And uh, when we get into projects that, that start to go above five, I guarantee you that there's going to be more complex, complexity. It's going to be more parking. There's going to be more stormwater treatment. So uh, in having that discussion with Council Palmucci, I told him that uh, I would ask, I would look at the past and, and see what we're looking at. And uh, I, I feel pretty strongly that, uh, you know, where we are right now, uh, at three, there's no shortage of calls coming from the ward counselors. There's no shortage of uh, citizen calls. You know, they want us to take a hard look at everything in all the neighborhoods. So that being said, um, you know, if, if I was to pick a hill to die on, I wouldn't want to do anything. I, I wouldn't want to give up the oversight of five or more, um, but beyond that, there are some three units and four unit projects that are impactful to a neighborhood. And it just is uh, one of those situations when I went to the planning board, uh, we talked you know, about this and they felt that they were not in a place to legislate a reduction in what we do uh, in scale. They have their thoughts. Uh, I, I kind of stayed with the former planning director and I asked him his thoughts. And 
his question went exactly to the number of projects that we actually looked at. And if what we're talking about is in between the threes, the fives, and the fours, you know, we're talking about 18 uh, projects, uh, maybe a little bit more. Hold on, let me give you a quick number one, two, three, four, five. So 22 projects, two of which were absolutely setbacks. Uh, we're, excuse me, we're subdivisions in Res A. So we're looking at 18 projects over the course of the period of time between 2013 and 9. I don't think it is, um, it is these projects that eat up our time. Uh, when you get into a larger project, obviously, they are far more impactful and we spend a lot more time on them. But uh, that's kind of my read on, on you know, increasing the number. I, absolutely believe 10 is not a good number. And uh, I think it's just too much would happen in that area where I think that uh, we would be asked to have an opinion normally. Uh, so that, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm more than happy to answer questions and specifics. But uh, with that, that's pretty much what I have. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues, but I'm just going to start um, in deference to the sponsor of this bill, uh, Councilor Pamucci. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jim, I don't come to where you work and complain about the ideas you have, saying 10 isn't a good number. Um, but I, I was here during the recodification process. It was actually my first term when we uh, voted in the recodification, so I remember when the recommendation was, was 10 for site plan review. Um, that's one of the two reasons why I chose the number 10, um, uh, 10 units to put in here. And the other was the trigger of the affordable housing number uh, in elsewhere in our zoning. <coughs> so, um, and I introduced this just in general. Uh, I think there's a, a, a relative consensus that three units to be reviewed uh, for site plan review is too few. Um, I don't know where the number should be. Uh, I introduced it at 10 because of the affordable housing and the, the previous recommendation from the um, outside expert. But also, if I introduced it at a high number and it went lower, that's fine. If we introduced it at a low number and it went higher, there would be potentially an issue relative to the um, advertisement of it that uh, it was a substantial change that would have required uh, re-advertisement. So uh, more than anything, the number 10 was meant as a trigger to start the discussion overall. Um, I think it's, it's clear based on what you said tonight, Jim, and the, the feedback that I've, I've had from um, members of the planning board um, that you know, 10's not the right number, and I'm not committed to 10 in any way. I'm sure. Five is, is, I'm fine with amending it to five if, there's a, um, if there ends up being a consensus among us uh, during this legislative process to what a number to what number is better if there's a better number, uh, I'm happy to either amend it or accept it as a friendly amendment. I, I, I'm not committed to 10 in any way. Uh, it was more to trigger the discussion that we're having now. And I just want to, um, I just want to specify for, uh, for anyone um, who doesn't fully appreciate that we're not talking about um, ending the public process for projects that don't meet zoning. So we have a set of zoning codes. You know, I, in my experience as a, as a ward counselor for you know, going into 10 years now, I think I've only had two, maybe three projects that have ever been in Ward 4 out of probably 100, 150 maybe, that um, only had site plan review. Because usually when a project goes forward in Quincy, you know, a development project, it also needs zoning relief because it doesn't meet the zoning code. Because it's very rare that a project, whether it's three or, or more, has sufficient amount of space to build that many units in the city of Quincy. Um, so usually there's a setback issue or there's a density issue. There's something else that then triggers the need to have a public hearing um, and for the proponent of the developer to, to receive a variance from the zoning board. So this wouldn't in any way affect that. So it's people who don't meet zoning, projects that don't meet zoning, would still have a full pro public process uh, would still have to appear for variances before the zoning board. The only thing that the only projects that this would impact 
would be projects that meet zoning code fully uh, that are now three or more, but if we go to five or whatever it is, um, that fully meet the zoning. Uh, and the only thing they wouldn't have is the site plan review, which is that extra uh, step of going to the planning board for review. I often, uh, in a lot of the projects that I hold community meetings on, they have to go to both. They have to go for a public hearing at the zoning board as well as site plan review at the planning board. And uh, I explain the difference at community meetings as the zoning board can say yes or no, because if they deny the variance, the project can't go forward. So the zoning board hearings are a yes or no uh, question, whereas the planning board and site plan review, it's not a yes or no, because you can't necessarily stop a project at the planning board, it's more of a how. So zoning board's a yes or no, and a planning board's a, a how. So site plan review, they can tell you, you should do this a little bit different, or you should do this different, um, but it's not the type of hearing or the type of process in which uh, an applicant can be told no. So if the zoning's there, uh, and the only thing that they have to do is site plan review, it's not as if that public process could stop a project if people weren't uh, comfortable with it. So uh, I suppose, um, you know, I want to make it very clear, I'm, I'm open to any, whatever number we come up with, if we come up with a different number, um, you know, mutually between us, I'm not committed to the 10. Uh, Jim, could you just talk about the, um, maybe the last couple of years and uh, the, the kind of the work that your department has done? I mean, one of the reasons really why it prompted me to introduce this now was that I, I, my impression is that there are so many projects going on in Quincy and there are so many big projects going on in Quincy, not to mention the downtown, even apart from that, which is huge, right? It's, it's you know, generational change in the downtown. Um, but when I think of, you know, the, the planning board and the planning department and the folks, the employees, the staff, spending time working on a three unit project that meets zoning, that to me seems like time that would have been, would be better spent elsewhere given the limited resources you have um, in your staffing. So could you just speak to um, kind of the work that your department's been doing over the past couple of years and certainly uh, views? Well, as, as we all witness, the volume has been dramatic um, throughout the city. Um, we go use a construction, you know, if I was going to go back in time and start at 13, what was approved from 13 forward, uh, some of these projects, some of these projects, uh, obviously, the Marina Bay Muriel, which everybody's very familiar with, you know, that started uh, on 513 13. Uh, the bu building permit was pulled in 15, and the Occupancy permit was in 17. Now there's pieces that we go back to make sure that things were done the way the planning board finding came out. Um, the most recent number of units that, uh, you know, over this period of time, there's about 2,055 units that are occupied. <laughs> there's 866 units currently under construction. There are 884 units that have been permitted by the planning board that are not uh, yet in, in what we would call a permit phase. There's 719 that are in permit phase. And there is uh, 793, what we call will hits. These are when people come through, they make a projection, they tell us what they'd like to do. We sit down and we have a preliminary meeting some of these don't come back, some of them come in. Uh, some of them are, quite frankly, just not well planned out. So it takes a little bit of time. But if I was gonna discuss the number of units uh, since 13, it was 5,317 units that we've looked at or we particularly spend time on. And uh, you're, you're right, it's the larger ones that take a great deal of our time uh, we got to get them right, uh, but the reality here is the real big ones aren't as problematic. Um, the 60s, the 80s, the 40s, the 50s, the sometimes 20s, they can be very challenging. You know, if you're doing something at Marina Bay 
or there's a PUD involved or anything of that nature, you know, that's, that's getting handled. We, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, outside expert help. We bring in peer review and they look at every facet of this, these projects. And that's another reason that, you know, there's, there are some projects, you know, could I say that there's a project of five out there that I don't think that we could add an awful lot to? Well, if they have plenty of land, uh, and they don't need any setbacks, and frankly, they're in the right district. Uh, for instance, they're in a uh, Res C, or they're in a uh, an industrial zone that is pretty much switched to residential. And we have those in the city areas that, you know, uh, are residential now. But if you were looking even down in North Quincy, where the hotels going up, there's been proposals right at the beginning of Newport Ave. That's really turned into a residential area. There were other projects that were done in that area over where Zildjian Symbol was, et cetera. So that area was once industrial and those projects got a good looking at, each one of them is going through a process, but their work, they're not the, they're not, you know, you just bang them out. Um, but I think it's important to note that, you know, in no time do I feel that we've been overwhelmed by the nines and the eights and the sevens and the sixes and the fives and I, I don't think or the or the fours and the threes we, we've not been overwhelmed but there's volume and this department has seven as basically eight people on the on the planning side uh, and uh, on the community development side where there is some crossover you know we have eight people over there as well so it's not a huge department it's Certainly not what the Boston Redevelopment uh, Authority had, or whatever they're called now. It's, these are, this is a very busy time for the city. Um, we spend the time on each project. Every project gets a full you know, work up, work over. I'm sure there are some proponents that think we do too much. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're very comfortable with the, being able to handle that volume. But um, I don't. I, I don't want to sound any flippant, but I, we're running out of land. Uh, so I don't see a huge number of projects uh, continuing, although I use the number on the will hits of 793. Some of those are good sized projects, 200, pro 200 units, 60 units, 80 units, and so forth. So uh, that's, that's really kind of the history of what we've looked at. And uh, we do work very closely with with zoning. Obviously, Mr. Duke and I spend a great deal of time. We have um, project review meetings before every planning board meeting and Mr. Duke comes. And we sit down, we go over what's gone on in his shop. Some of these projects will go to uh, zoning first because they're sensitive on setbacks. They're, they're looking for an awful lot of relief. And I suggest that they do so before they come to us because if in fact uh, it's going to be stopped in, in zoning, then there's no real reason to proceed on the planning side. Uh, and and that's, that's pretty much an overview of what we've done as far as numbers go. Um, you know, and I have this information and more than happy, you, you've all probably seen this that has come out, which has most of the projects geographically located in the city. But uh, due to the counselor's thought process, I have put together some new projects, basically, that are approved development projects, density and parking, and also, uh, finally, the piece that I was quoting from earlier, which really is uh, a more recent piece that uh, we plan to uh, put out here uh, to the council and let you take a look at each and every one of them. It, but it's, that's it. I mean, that's, this is what we're talking about uh, as far as volume goes on uh, threes, fours, and fives, uh, that's it. So Do you have copies of that with you, by I, any chance? I can make them up for you, and, and uh, you're more than welcome to, to take a look at them. But this is something I just wanted to have as, a, as a, uh, a, something, a working piece, but more than happy to share anything that sure. we have here. This is, you know. And what I do on these is basically the number of units, the lot size, square footage, lot area per unit, total parking spaces, parking per unit ratio, 
the zoning district, the ward, the construction phase, the approved by planning board date, if it has been, the building permit when it was pulled, and the permit of occupancy. So some of these have not been occupied yet. So uh, more than happy to share any of this information. It's just I wanted to be a little bit clearer with numbers tonight as I stood before you, so we produced this in the last few days. Thank you, I have nothing. Give me one second, Councilor. Council Carl, you have the floor next. You could have called someone else, that's fine. <laughs> Just chatting with my friend Rob, yeah. Thank no you, uh, Madam Chairwoman. Um, you know, I spent quite a bit of time just thinking through this and you know I, I was not on the body when they went through the recodification process um, you know, I know now this body is you know at least uh, contemplating going through the exercise uh, collectively as, as a city um, and as we all know you know as as we continue to grow through density um, you know things things sort of change and um, I've always viewed sort of my role as ward counselor to to be pretty active in the process and I think Jim, you would probably agree you with are. that because, um, you know, I, I realize that when, when we are introducing uh, a concept into a neighborhood, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a high probability at times that it's, it's for the greater good. And uh, sometimes there's some ancillary side effects. So I was just kind of going through some numbers that you shared. Uh, and you said basically since 2013, you've roughly entertained 18 projects between three and five units. Was that, did I capture that correctly? You captured that correctly. Two other projects were really subdivisions up in West Quincy where there were single house lots. So 18 right. of the nature. In Hoover of Avenue, I think would exactly, have been another one. Exactly right. Up in my neck of the woods, that right? Exactly correct. So that's roughly, call it six years, and I know we're not at a full year, you know, full six year capture, but you're talking about three projects per year that your department has taken on between three and five units, right? And, and I do want to point out, there's probably been hundreds of other units that have come before us. That never made it out of the never box. Never made it off the, you know, they're on the cutting room floor. Um, so that's important to point out. If there is a project that isn't making it at all, you're not hearing about that project. I'm not bringing you in. A, the, the only ones that we carry after their will hits, in other words, things that we've been introduced, is things that have uh, gone on and been approved by the planning board and received a building, a building permit and a permit uh, of, of occupancy. So from a volume standpoint, you know, I, I, I want to be clear, there are any number of projects that just, they lie fallow and they're not. Right, but if we're using your math, Yes, I'm the amount of projects that your right. team physically hits, meaning you know we're going to try to monetize this project and advance the concept forward, would be three, yeah. roughly, right? Yeah, I mean, there have been more in the 16s. Obviously, uh, if we're going to you know the years, there's been more activity from you know that that basically started you know later. Uh, then in 13 wasn't when we were really hopping. We've been hopping for the last, you right. know. No, uh, I know. And you know, guys do, you know, years, you do so. a fine job based on the resources that you have. And I know it's a, you know, it's a, it's a difficult role to be in, um, particularly given the economic cycle that we're, uh, that we're experiencing, you know, which is we're uh, busy. a lot this of is development, the, for sure. You know, that's when it, you're going to be busy when, when the interest rates are where they are and when there's activity and when there's been a lot of action in Boston and moving south, you know, we're, this is our time. And uh, so we're, we're, we're busier now than we were, say, in 13, but, you know, that, that is... So I won't say it was, an av it was an average of three a year, but most of them probably came in in 15, 16, and right. 17. So... You know, I'm just going to use the five as a number because it sounds like we started at 10 and we may be somewhere at five. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a different market segment, at least in my opinion. You know, when you're doing those, call it three to five units, and, you know, what I've experienced uh, in several instances are those issues that um, actually site plan helped me through the site plan and peer review process to sort of capture some of the uh, 
ailments that come with uh, development on, how do we call it, very creative uh, land, right? And just taking into consideration my district, I have a lot of ledge. So when we're talking about water runoff, you know, stormwater distribution, um, you know, and then you factor in topography that deals with ledge. I mean, there's a lot more, um, there's a lot higher probability for things to potentially go wrong and unintended consequences to present themselves. So I, as a ward counselor, have always felt that, um, you know, having tools in my toolbox to help educate me because I don't do this every day. So I found, you know, a lot of solace dealing with the site plan review process and dealing with, um, you know, the, uh, the assessment that comes through the peer review um, process to be very helpful uh, to me in terms of, you know, effectively advocating for um, a project, whether it's, a, you know, a good thing for the neighborhood or a bad thing for the neighborhood, but really having the tools to mitigate any potential, um, you know, issues. So I guess what I struggle with is given where we're at, um, you know, the city's contemplating going through kind of a major overhaul and looking into to everything. Um, and as it stands now, and I'm just throwing hypothetical numbers, if we're using five as the baseline, it's tasked your department with roughly three projects more per year. Like, why would I as a ward council want to move on that number from three? If it doesn't seem like a tremendous lift and you can correct me if I'm wrong, for your department, like why wouldn't I want access to that? Well, as you and I know that we've had some doozies at four, right? Uh, and and when We I have one that, going on right now. Yeah. Right. So I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I want to be clear, each project is viewed on its own against the ordinances. I would say that uh, we view this uh, department as, an, uh, to your point earlier, uh, Council Calamucci said, no, we're about entitlement. We want you to do it, but we want you to do it right, and you have to follow the rules as you do it. And if there are some suggestions and or additional work that has to be done, say, on uh, drainage and, and, and on uh, water retention cells that have to be added to the project to make the, the engineers more comfortable that the water on the site will stay on the site, which is our goal. No one can just move their stormwater off the site to affect their neighbors. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a, um, it's, it's difficult to say that any one project, you know, is something that, ah, oh, that's the worst one that I ever got. There's, oh, I understand. All, I'm just curious. Why would I want to give up that tool? Well, I, I, I'm not suggesting you have to or should. I would say to you as a ward counselor, um, it's a tool in the toolbox, and I'm not, I'm not anxious about, you know, keeping it at three. Uh, I certainly am not. I just want to make sure that, you know, the numbers are the numbers, and, and that you can back into them and you can look at them. But I think each and every one of you, I mean, I've, I, and again, I, I don't want to just suggest that the ward councilors are the only ones that uh, come to planning board meetings. You, you've been at a lot lately, and. Uh, you know, Councilor Mahoney's been at a lot of, uh, of projects lately. I mean, the, the interesting thing for me, and I know this may sound a little counterintuitive, but sometimes the smaller projects give me more trepidation than the larger ones. And on many different levels, we're talking, you know, economics, and obviously, you know, that, 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 is this what they do in their everyday, you know, work? I mean, again, I viewed it as it's an additional tool available to me as a ward counselor. Um, and given all the activity that's going on in the city, uh, I'm not so sure that I want to let that go. I understand that. And, and it's important to note, and I think all of you would know this, that Res B can look a lot different in a different neighborhood. Uh, there are some Res B projects that are on a main road people tend to say, well, on a main road, I'm a little bit more willing to have a little bit more activity, a little more density, depending on where that road is within the city. Um, I know Council McCarthy and I have looked at a lot of parts of things that aren't in Quincy Center, but because developers have come to Quincy Center, take a look at Quincy Center, then they do a little concentric circle outside of Quincy Center. Ah, here's another area that 
very close, and I might want to engage in, in, in trying to you know, do a project there. So it, it's, it's, it's one case of those by case. <laughs> I completely agree with you, and I, I'll speak for myself. For projects, a good thing. If it's the right project in the right spot at the right time, I'll be the first one to go up to the microphone and speak in favor of it. It's just when it's uh, not the right project in the right spot, what kind of tools do I have to work with the neighbors, get outside opinions, and um, you know, structure a case uh, accordingly. As you all know, every project that is happening in a ward, that ward council uh, is supposed to hear from that proponent. Uh, we tell them, please, have a neighborhood meeting. The bigger the project, it matters more, but there are sensitive parts of a neighborhood that, quite frankly, you as ward councilors are, are more aware than I am. Uh, I can look back and see what else has been permitted in a period of time, but you know, there is, in some neighborhoods, yeah, the attitude is we're all set, but then there's fatigue in some other neighborhoods where they are feeling a little bit more of a push. And it isn't going to matter whether it's six units or four units or two units. Uh, the neighbors and the residents may want to have their opportunity to to speak. And, uh, you know, obviously, you get right. to speak no, twice. I don't. I know it doesn't mute the public process by any stretch of the map. Right. Oh, it absolutely. Just essentially change yeah, the absolutely. landscape and the access and to. Council Palm, which is dead on. Every 100%. single project that's coming before us is yep. going to go through a public process. It just depends on at what level the scrutiny comes in. And, uh, and the applicants have the option or opportunity to ask for um, a waiver on peer review. Yes, they, they do. have that option. Yes, they do. So, and that's, I mean, my understanding that decisions made both with your department and I would assume the ward counselor with a project, I mean, ultimately your department, but I'm sure the ward counselors have, you know, input on that to an extent. I'm just saying if it's, well, if and, it's to and, and, and to that point, um, quite frankly, in this period of time where we've been very busy, we haven't been waiving a whole lot of peer review. But that's an option. That's an I option. I could come to you today with that's a project right. and say, Mr. Fatsies, I'd like to file a waiver uh, and, for a peer and, review. And even when they get peer review, they can request within that peer review to waive a shadow study if right. there's not a real shadow yep. being cast. And they can re request other, you know, photometric, uh, you know, uh, review. They can also... Wind is a review. Uh, you know, is this going to create a, a little wind pocket here? We all know right. you go next to a, a larger building, you can feel a wind pocket that may not have been there before. So there's the opportunity to, to ask for a partial waiver. If right. we've been doing a neighborhood where there's been a lot of track, a uh, lot of activity, we've got probably, I think Willard Street, there's a lot of traffic studies that have been done in that corridor because there's been activity. So, you know, you may not need as robust a traffic review. In other places where there's been nothing, we want everything. We want a traffic review. We want everything that, that we can get. Understood. Yep. I'm going to counsel, uh, Madam Chairwoman, at this point. I'll, I'll yield to my colleagues. I know we're coming up against it. And thank you for letting me share my thoughts. No, of course, Counselor. And I think um, you bring up some good concerns, and I certainly want to make sure that our colleagues have ample time to bring up questions that they have. I know I have some questions that I'd like to discuss as well. We are coming right up against 7.30, so I want to be mindful of our hard stop. Um, that being said, you know, Council McCarthy, if you'd like to start, you can. Um, but again, I just want to be respectful of your time. If you can ask questions within four minutes, that's wonderful, but I would hate to cut you off, so we can wait. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll adjourn this meeting so that we can make sure we have the 7.30 start time that we need to. Um, if Recess, I'm sorry. If we can, we'll get back into this ordinance committee meeting tonight so we can finish this conversation, um, depending on what we get up to on the clock on the council meeting later. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Monday, March 4th, 2019 meeting of the Quincy City Council. Madam Clerk, if you would, please call the roll. Councilor Kane. Present. Councilor DeBona. Present. Councilor Harris. Present. Councilor Hughes. Here. Councilor Liang. Present. Councilor Mahoney. Present. Councilor McCarthy. Present.
Council Palmucci. Present. President Kroll. Present. Nine members. Nine members. We have a quorum at this point, folks. If you please stand and join me in a moment of silence, um, keeping in our thoughts and prayers those men and women who serve our country. If you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Madam Clerk, if you would, please read into the record the open meeting law. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Before we get to the uh, first item on the agenda, I just wanted to publicly thank all the uh, city employees who were out in full force last night, uh, plowing our streets and making it safe to uh, get around the city today. Was, uh, that was quite a show. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge some of our friends from organized labor that are out in the audience as well. And with that, uh, Madam Clerk, the first item on the agenda. Presentation by Mayor Thomas P. Koch. Mr. Mayor. Good evening, sir. President, members of the council, uh, good to be with you tonight to talk about the next major phase of our transformation of Quincy Center. Um, this body has been uh, a big partner and a big part of all the progress we've made to date. And we're excited about the next phase uh, on the Ross side, which is uh, essentially the section between Hancock Street and the tracks, Hennon Parkway and Granite Street. Um, so tonight we're gonna talk a little bit about, give a little bit of an overview. Um, essentially, you, you have in front of you two packages but three submittals. The binder has both the um, the Ross Lawn, um, the District Improvement Finance and Bond, as well as the URDP plan update. This is a Fifth Amendment, but the language in front of you in, entails all of the language from the first iteration right through the other four amendments. Um, the District Improvement Financing Bond authorization uh, is also in there with all the backup information uh, of each step of the way. And then, of course, the separate piece um, under the um, CLIPS, I guess it is, is the land use business and agreement that's been agreed to uh, between our team and the Fox Rock team. Uh, worked very hard on both sides, uh, a lot of detail, a lot of moving parts. I certainly recognize that uh, there's an awful lot of information here, uh, and, uh, and certainly my hope in the coming weeks that we'll be able to schedule some uh, meetings and uh, have some good discussion. Uh, we have an outstanding team that will be able to answer all the questions, I hope, uh, that you may have uh, as you go through your due diligence. A little bit of background progress to date. I think it's important that uh, every so often we take a step back and look at where we're at, uh, where we've come from. Uh, as you know, over the years, the last 40 years, we've had a lot of uh, starts and stops with the downtown, but uh, we clearly have some good momentum going now. Included in the binder is the UMass Dartmouth study which has some important numbers in it, important data in it. Um, to date, the progress to date, uh, some 4,000 jobs have been created or sustained uh, through our downtown work. 440, 14 million in economic output, 200 million in private investment, and 140 million in new property value, uh, which is very important, obviously, to the DIF. Public improvements that we've seen, and some of you may recall, there were three core uh, improvements that needed to be made uh, right from day one, investors uh, were not going to look at the downtown without some public investment. One was the uh, relocation of the Tom Brook, which was paid for through uh, MassWorks monies. Uh, another was the new roadway, which came to be known uh, affectionately as Hannon Parkway, which uh, we used ARA money, uh, federal money, for that project. And then the Hancock Adams Common, which, as you know, we just dedicated this past September. That piece of uh, beautiful green space uh, and area was something that was very important to the public 
a number of years ago when a number of hearings were held throughout the city about the future of the downtown. Uh, so I think we're quite proud of that project as well. We, we, we had uh, Gateway Cities money involved in that piece, as, others, as other state monies, and then of course we used the hotel tax, as you know, this body voted to endorse the hotel tax to be used to pay for the construction of the park and the finish. So those three core improvements were very, very important uh, to all the investors and, and important to the to future of the development. Uh, the next phase, uh, public improvements, uh, actually there, MassDOT is preparing the site now for the General's Bridge. Uh, construction is ex expected to start probably in May or June. You'll start to see some activity and that goes through the parking lot of the Commonwealth Building uh, between the parking lot and the parking way. Um, as you know, that bridge will connect from Bergen Parkway into the new roadway systems in this new area. Uh, it'll be a right turn in and right turn out program. The Hancock Garage, as, as you voted on that last year, um, is underway. The um, foundations are being poured as we speak and the sections will be arriving very soon. We do expect that garage to be open uh, for September. We continue to work through Carter Jab, Dennis Ryan Parkway, and other areas replacing and relocating outdoor and outdated underground utilities. That includes sewer water drain, uh, as, as well as uh, gas and other utilities. And we've seen to date, as, as you know, the west of Chestnut, fully occupied, 169 units, uh, 25,000 square feet of retail. The Clived in place, 56 new condominium units. 75% of those have been sold, and 8,000 square feet of retail on the first floor. Uh, 22 Mechanic Street, the, the 34 residential units in that building. And 111 Washington Street is that new office building on the corner, uh, which is uh, almost fully occupied. The Nova residences are under construction as we speak. We've seen that uh, going up. And Chestnut Place, uh, which is the 15-story O'Connell building, foundations are being poured uh, as we speak for that project as well. So tremendous progress to date. Uh, and it wouldn't happen without the great collaboration between the administration, this body, uh, and so many other folks who work hard each and every day. So the Ross Area List Land Disposition Agreement, commonly known as the LDA. As you know, Fox Rock has been uh, designated the developer of that, uh, that site. Uh, they have purchased the Commonwealth Building Site, which is 37R Parking Way. Uh, and that, combined with some of the land uh, that the city is putting up will create a decent sized development parcel. And uh, we heard a couple of weeks ago from two major medical institutions who are committed to this project, Brigham Women's and South Shore Health. They're going in partnership on this 200,000 square foot building. It will include a number of services that will come out um, a little bit later as they continue to work out the details, but ambulatory surgery, specialty care, a lot of things that people have to leave the city for today uh, will not have to leave the city any longer once this is built. Uh, two first-class institutions, and we're very excited that uh, they're part of the new downtown. Uh, there'll be f more than 400 new jobs there, and it's estimated uh, about 500,000 visits to that place uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, that was piece uh, building one. Uh, building two is the hotel, which is about 140 rooms. And then the third building is workforce housing, which is about 110 units at this point. Uh, of course, there'll be new roads and public spaces uh, in that area as we build out uh, that whole program. You might have seen this iteration. Uh, maybe some folks at home have not. Um, bottom left column, uh, bottom left corner, I should say, is the Hannon Parkway. The street uh, that's dominant there on the right is Hancock Street. And between the new buildings and the rear of the Hancock Street buildings is the new uh, will be McConville Way, uh, which will crisscross with the Dunford Drive at the corner at the bridge. You can see the three separate building entities. Uh, if you look to the far left there, uh, you see the IHOP site. Um, and uh, we'll get into a little bit here. Uh, it was always anticipated we'd be building at least one parking garage on this side of Hancock Street. At one point, way back on the Street Works program, we had seven different garages proposed, uh, but we are looking at a major parking structure here that will help uh, handle, obviously, the parking needs for the development as well as the public. So some key points here. Um, as, as you know, this, there's a little bit of a connection between this project and the project in the hospital with the same developer. 
So the city will receive 4.25 million. That was something we agreed in the tolling agreement some time ago. Uh, the, the transaction doesn't happen until all the medical space is finalized and the project is fully permitted. Um, Fox Rock is foregoing the payment for the taking of the right of way for the bridge. MassDOT's paying for the bridge, but the city has to handle the right of way. So um, that was valued about a million dollars. They're foregoing that payment. Uh, the real estate reverter clause released at, will be released at the uh, medical center uh, per the tolling agreement as part of this program. Uh, two-thirds of the property will pay full taxes, the hotel and the residential being the two-thirds. Um, economic development agreement includes no new taxes, uh, no taxes on the medical facility. Um, some of you may be very well aware that nonprofit medical institutions don't pay taxes. South Cove Health in North Quincy does not, Manit Health does not, uh, and we go into some of the hospitals in town, some of them do pay pilot programs, but in order to get medical services back to the city, I believe this is a, a well worth a while investment. You can see the city tax benefits currently on that side. We get about $84,000 in property taxes from that Commonwealth building. Um, and uh, with these projects built, tax revenue will be about $569,000. So you can see uh, it's a winner uh, even with the discount to bring medical uh, to this project. And you can see the numbers over 40 years. Uh, it's going to generate more than $25 million in, in taxes than what exists today. So it's, uh, in my estimation, uh, and uh, we've certainly been at the table with a lot of folks and our advisors and financial people, um, this makes perfect sense if we want some medical back in the city. Um, so the other projects will more than carry um, the taxes for that side of the project. Uh, I would also suggest that uh, the jobs that are coming to this site, and there'll be uh, more than 400, uh, bring with, uh, with them disposable income that will also add to the economic benefit to all those that operate in the downtown. Part of the package um, is, the, is the DIF, the District Improvement Financing, uh, and the budget uh, is, is very detailed in your binder. It's a $61 million financing request, uh, and I would again remind the public that the DIF, District Improvement Financing, is financed from the district, that the new uh, tax revenue and the new growth, the new values in the downtown uh, come into the DIF program we spend money out of the diff, or we bond out of the diff, and that money then is repaid through those new taxes into the downtown. So uh, the folks living in different parts of the city do not pay for the improvements at the downtown. And that's something we've been consistent with from day one. Uh, though the downtown was a drag on the city literally for years, uh, and all of the downtown needed a major upgrade, so it was a liability to the taxpayer, uh, we've reversed that, and today it's becoming a great asset to the taxpayer with the uh, improvements being paid for uh, largely through the district improvement financing. We've also, as you know, leveraged tens of millions of dollars in federal and state monies as well. We're meeting all our revenue targets uh, for the existing DIF financing, and I know that uh, once we get into some of the meetings, um, the folks that work with us on this project on a regular basis will be happy to appear to uh, before this body and uh, discuss some of the background on that. Uh, but even the conservative revenue projections will cover the current cost uh, on the financing. You may remember back in 2010, uh, the original number we were throwing around was about $280 million for all the public improvements, and um, we're not near that at this point. So with this proposal, our local public improvement budget is less than half of that original plan, um, which is obviously good news. Uh, this shows uh, how much capacity we still have in the DIF, so there's, there's great capacity. We're well within uh, range uh, for borrowing and, uh, and those revenues to pay for that borrowing. Again, another way to look at it. Um, debt service today is 2.8 million. The total revenue is 4.6. Um, I know that the council president has had some discussions with me about segregating an account totally. Um, as you may know, we pay our, um, our bills and then the, the money does fall back into the general fund by creating a separate segregated DIF account. Um, and I concur with the council president, it makes some sense, some, has some merit, uh, that then that will, will build. And if we need to tap that at some point, either for more improvements in the downtown or 
for whatever reason we couldn't make a payment, and I don't see that happening, uh, that money would be there, but almost like a stabilization account on the diff side. So we'll get into that probably at budget time uh, in greater detail. I'd also suggest at that time we'll be creating a, a little division that will be funded out of the diff to oversee some of these new um, projects and areas. For example, the Hancock Adams Common, um, as you know, is very extensive. There's a lot of uh, moving parts. There's a lot of water elements, a lot of lighting elements, and those things have to be taken care of and maintained uh, in, a, in a very great way. So we'll be talking more at budget time, again, using diff money to maintain some of these uh, going forward. So the public improvement side, uh, we're looking at about 24 million for the Ross area. So that's the new road alignments. Um, as you've driven through there over the years, there were two roughly one ways. They, they were never accepted streets, um, but they did uh, do the job for a period of time. They, they were in the center was the garage that we took down uh, a couple of years back, but that'll allow us to do the road realignment, create the public spaces, do all the underground utilities and the soil remediation that needs to be done. Uh, 16 million for park and garage preparation. Um, so that would be the biggest chunk of that is for the acquisition of the old AJ Wright building site. Uh, we're looking at that site in, in conjunction with uh, the remainder of the land left from the bridge construction between the bridge and the IHOP for a garage. Then of course the design and engineering aspect of it is also in the funding. As you may recall, we've had an approval from the state for a number of years. We have it extended through the IQ program. And the IQ program was, was money that we would grant get from the state. Uh, and uh, it's, it was kind of a unique uh, program, and it gets paid back through the new taxes to the state created by the development. It's largely dependent on commercial. We haven't used it to date because much of the projects to date, or most of it has been residential. Uh, so we're looking at 450 thousand square feet over here, uh, largely commercial with the hotel and the medical units. So uh, we, are, we are anticipating meeting with uh, the governor's team in the coming weeks and looking for the state to participate in the actual construction cost of that garage. Nine million dollars for the Cliveden Street extension, that, that street will, will be renamed. Uh, but if you cross Hancock Street from Cliveden, that's going to be a driveway, a new road into and out of the garage, another egress to the Hancock Garage. So we'll be taking uh, some property there and building out the road uh, and the utilities as necessary on that side of the street. And then of course, as, as you know, uh, operationally, oversight, legal, engineering, financial services, permitting, um, you know, we, we had a lot of, we've had a lot of outside expertise. I think some of the best in the business at the table with us to make sure we get this right. These decisions we're making are 50 to 100 year decisions for the future of the city and we only have the best at the table, uh, and those folks uh, will be paid out of that account. The URDP update, I know this council has had some interest and concern about some of the properties in the downtown. I think there were some hearings held. Uh, we share some of those concerns. We certainly hope that uh, there'll be a number of private transactions, but if need be, we can use the tool of eminent domain. Um, if we have an uninterested landlord who may be not paying attention to maintaining the building and perhaps it's getting in the way of a much better project and program for the people of the city. Uh, so that is one of the tools, but um, there'll be a, there's a number of up, updates in there and the properties uh, that we're adding to that list are in there. Um, so we look forward to discussion on the URDP update. I mentioned the downtown team, um, as you know, and of course, uh, one guy's name is not on there. That's my chief of staff, Chris Walker, who works very hard on this, along with Bill Gary and Frank Tremontosi, Jim Fats, he's Rob Stevens in the planning department, our economist. Uh, Eric Mason's been very helpful with the numbers. The BSC group, we've used them in the past in the downtown, as we have with McKinney Byrne, um, associates of financial advisors, RKG's been at the table since we started the downtown projects, Wooded and Curran, uh, proven their value uh, in civil engineering and project management. The crucial group uh, overseeing uh, for us the construction of the garage. Attorney Jim Masterman, I know he's appeared before this body on a number of occasions, one of the preeminent eminent domain councils in the state. Uh, Desmond Design Management, uh, their expertise is parking garages and of course Fox Rock uh, properties. And, and I know a single, uh, Chris Walker out, but um, Bill Gary has been really the guy putting the pieces together 
particularly in all the uh, legal language. So we have an outstanding team, um, and I would ask, uh, respectfully request and ask that this council, uh, through the various committees this will affect, um, certainly downtown economic development, uh, finance and ordinances, uh, that we can put together a schedule over the coming weeks. It'd be helpful to us to have some advance notice on the meetings for purposes of getting some of these folks who are busy folks who um, are uh, out there and uh, do very, very well in their businesses, but the sooner we can get them some dates uh, to get them in here to uh, respond to any questions and expand on any of the detail, that would be terrific. So I'm, I'd be happy to take any questions if you have any, Mr. President, or members of the council. Uh, but that gives kind of a brief um, 30,000 foot overview of the next phase of the downtown. Any uh, Council De Bona. Thank you, Mr. President. Mayor, thank you for coming in with your presentation tonight. It's good to see you here um, going into some really important aspects of the downtown and the um, and uh, what will happen in the future here. Um, you know, um, I'm going in my fourth year here um, on the city council, and I remember running for the seat four years ago, and we didn't, Street Works had just released themselves, and um, the West of Chester was being help. built. What's that? They had some help. They didn't release themselves. <laughs> well, okay. Um, <clears throat> the West of Chestnut was being built, and the steel was in the ground. I know the iron workers are here, but we, we needed to see the steel. I knew I was out there, the steel was in the ground. We knew that this was gonna go forward, we we're gonna go in segments. Now, I know when Fox Rock came about an acquisition, I could use the word acquisition, uh, the Whitwell site and kind of the master developer for um, the downtown site, um, the biggest thing that was talked about was a million square footage of commercial space. Um, you're coming in front of us tonight um, with 450,000 square feet, which is a little under half with the, um, with the hotel and the 200 square feet, 200,000 square feet of medical use. Um, you know, in discussions before, you talked about the reverter clause. Um, that's gonna be released once the medical use for the 200,000 square feet, 200, um, is that gonna be released, that reverter for the emergency room? It, the uh, emergency, the well emergency room is a separate issue and, and we could get bogged down tonight. Um, that's licensed by the Department of Public Health. Stewart has that license right now. So Stewart could locate that in another part of the city. Uh, we don't know, we have not heard from Stewart. Uh, or another entity could create an ED perhaps, but these things get very, very um, complicated on the licensing and permitting side from the state. So um, I think that the medical uh, advantages of this new uh, proposal is gonna be huge for the people of the city. I do want to keep an ED in the city, whether that will become part of this down the road, that's a possibility, but I, I can't go much further than that, Councilor. Okay, so, so we basically have about two more years up at the Whitwell site, and that will be expired, is that, is that correct? Well, the, the, um, the license does yeah. expire, or they can renew. Okay. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean two more years on that site, they could find another site in the okay. city and move to that other site. Okay. Again, with approvals from the Department of Public Health and the state agencies. Sure. Um, the reason why I ask you is, is I, I think we were just talking about how our city is going to be growing to 100,000 uh, 100, people, 100,000 residents in this entire city. And I think it, to the best interest of the citizens of the city that we have an emergency room slash hopefully hospital down the road. Um, I know I had sat down with Fox Rock in the past and they were interested in, in possibly going with the, with the hospital site. I know that the medical use is a start. I would, um, I'd be, I mean, it's an open meeting law, so I never get a chance to talk to the full body, but I'd be very, very inclined, Mayor, to go up in height. I know we have a, a, an O'Connell building going up at 15 stories. I'd, I'd be very inclined to go up in height if we can put a hospital site um, on the Ross lot or um, take over the Messina lot or whatever the case may be. Is that in discussions with you or anybody else out there? Well, let me make it perfectly clear, Counselor. Um, there's not gonna be an acute care hospital in Quincy. The city of Quincy had operated a hospital in deficit for decades, spun that off in 1999 to a nonprofit. 
they lost money every year and they went bankrupt. Stewart bought them out of bankruptcy as a for-profit and they couldn't make it. Um, so, you know, we're so close to Boston, it's that old uh, strength and weakness thing. Yeah, there's so tremendous hospitals in Boston, people were elected to go into Boston uh, for those surgeries. Now, I could go on and on about uh, some of those issues. The, the, the reality was Quincy Hospital, Quincy Medical, uh, was probably doing 70 to 80 percent Medicare, Medicaid, and the government pays X amount on the, per dollar on those. They didn't have the margins. Whereas, for example, South Shore Hospital is probably 85 percent private insurance. They have tremendous margins. So uh, it's complicated. The healthcare industry continues to change rapidly. I wouldn't want to mislead anybody in the city that there's a hospital coming to the city, QQ Hospital. But just short of a hospital, I think you're going to see some tremendous services. Uh, with tremendous care that's going to be uh, at this new downtown site. And as the uh, deal comes together with Brigham Women's and South Shore, they'll be able to talk more publicly in the coming months about what that will entail. So there'll be a little bit more of expansion from the 200,000 uh, square feet that we're going to get for medical use. So down the road, there possibly could be more medical use. Is, is that? Oh, who, uh, there's all kinds of possibilities down the road. Bringing, bringing those two entities here is going to create some incredible interest. Uh, I, I think we're going to see some more uh, interest for life science and biotech. Um, I think there's going to be some great synergies for Quincy College and the nursing program with this institution. I think there's all kinds of wonderful things that are going to spin off from this. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, my, my second question really pertains to um, the Hancock Street corridor, which is the kind of the iron furnace which Fox Rock has all the way down to the jewelers where we have some absentee landlords. Now, we had a meeting last year, uh, Council Pamucci uh, here in the council. Um, wh what can we do to entice commercial slash growth in that particular area? Um, the reason why I asked to say that is looking up at Alba, looking down at the new LBC dwelling, the, the west of Chestnut, we're looking down on some empty furniture stores, um, some blighted, blighted areas, blighted uh, properties there. What, what, what can we do to enhance uh, or in incentivize um, commercial growth right there? Well, I, th I think the, the program in front of you uh, makes those properties more valuable, uh, for one. Number two is it's my expectation there's going to be some private transactions coming up. Uh, and lastly, I would say as part of the update in the URIDP, we're listing additional properties, just what you're describing, so that if some absentee landlord who really doesn't care about the city so deeply, but just collecting a rent, um, you know, we could use that tool to go in and make that change. Um, you know, those are tough decisions, they're public policy decisions, uh, but important ones, because what you, you know, if we're going to be continue the transformation of a downtown, we can't have a, um, you know, and a, a landlord who perhaps doesn't really pay attention to the property really get in the way of major new jobs, new growth, and, and, uh, and benefits to the residents of the city. So that's why we've included those additional properties in the new amendment so that we have that uh, approval so down the road. And, and again, if we go down that road, we come back to this body for such authorization. But um, it, it's another tool in the tool chest. Uh, we, we've talked on, offline on this, and I, I will tell you that I'm, I'm full in favor of doing something in that particular area, whether it be whatever in the toolbox, because um, going down the center, the, uh, you know, the downtown right now, we're seeing the revitalization and people are putting investments. You talked about public improvements. That particular area right there still looks so blighted, it hasn't changed in 30 years. And the, the public, the residents have been consistently, constantly telling me, what are you gonna do with that particular area? What, what are you trying to do? Um, I'm willing to have a great conversation and some type of in, uh, in, incentivize it um, on maybe giving some type of diff funding or whether, whatever a case may be on kind of speed tracking this because when we start building all this, um, I, I don't want to have the new dwellers at LBC um, uh, look down and the West of Chestnut look down on these blighted properties um, anymore. I mean, so I'm on board with the toolbox stuff and. Uh, um, looking forward to more conversations with, with the team. Um, looking forward to all this. I'm happy that you're here tonight. We, we, we're, we're getting this underway. This is a huge priority 
for the city. Um, with that, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mayor, for coming in. Thank, thank you for answering you. my questions. Thank you, Councillor. And I'm going to recognize Councillor McCarthy, but just for the body, these items will be referred to committee for a full scope and debrief and download on every item that's presented to us here today. And um, just as kind of a point of reference, because I understand where your question's you know, coming from, particularly on the density. Um, my understanding is the URDP is zoned to allow for height but the height proposal would always depend on the economics from the applicant. So remember, these deals are um, uh, agreed upon prior to the meeting and then brought to us for deliberation. So with that, Council McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Council. Uh, just a quick comment and, and, and on, on the whole project, and, and I'm, I'm glad to always see the ledger in the sun here, but. Um, for a number of months, and even before I became a counselor, people would say, what's the plan downtown? What's the plan? And I think if you can't figure out what the plan is now downtown, I, I don't know, uh, you know what you're looking at. Uh, folks have, I think we've turned the corner in regards, I think we're way past turning the corner with regards from what uh, you've done and the administration has done in regards to public improvements and private investment um, to get um, Fox Rock involved, uh, to get Brigham and Women's and South Shore in here, to put this layout, and I'm looking at the layout that's up on the board tonight, um, there's a plan. Uh, I, don't think I, I, I don't think I'll hear anybody else uh, or any more comments about, you know, what's the plan? Um, I think you've, you've got to that point and um, just to talk a little bit over Mr. DeBona, uh, Councilor DeBona talked about, I think it will jumpstart the other portions of the square that are dormant, that need help. You're gonna see other private investors come in when they see what you've done here, um, which is uh, transformed uh, Quincy Square into a, uh, well, it, it, look, it looks great on paper, and I know it's gonna look great in person, but, um, just kudos to you folks and, and the team you named on that last slide up there. There's a lot of work that goes into everything under the sun and um, take a lot of heat. Um, but I think you've got a plan, Mr. Mayor. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councilor. <coughs> thank you, uh, Councilor. Any other? Councilor Palmucci. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's, uh, thank you for being here tonight. Even though you set the agenda, you kind of invited, kind of invite yourself theoretically. But uh, it's always nice to have you here. Uh, it's been a long road to get to where we are downtown, um, and it certainly hasn't been easy. I think um, you know, with the administration, the council, uh, we've had disagreements along the way, uh, policy disagreements. But uh, I think it's we've always had the same vision. The, the city council collectively and the administration and, and you um, have always had the same vision for revitalizing downtown Quincy, um, Quincy Center and really making it the economic engine that drives the city's progress forward. I just want to take the, because you're here, take the opportunity to commend you and your administration for your consistent effort that you've put in over the past 12 years of really driving this home. Uh, I know it's uh, other administrations und uh, undertook various parts to lead us here, but it's been your administration that really has carried the ball forward and, and put, some, put some points on the board. So um, that's certainly, certainly worthy of, uh, of commendation and uh, look forward to getting into the LDA and, and, and the URDP changes. And we'll get into the weeds as we go forward. Um, uh, I, I will say that I, I am very pleased that, that we've, we're making some changes to the URDP to include some additional uh, takings to properties. I mean, it, you referenced um, that we may have had some hearings uh, in the council about about that, and we did. I mean, the, the point was to tell people who own these properties. We invited all of them to the chamber and said, "Hey, listen, we have a plan. What's your plan? Because vacant storefronts and crumbling buildings uh, are not part of our plan. So you tell us your plan. Let's try and work together, or get out of the way, so that someone else who does want to make Quincy better can step in and, and do so." So. I'm very pleased to see the, those additional properties added here and hope it um, provides that spark or kick in the pants, whatever you want to call it, that, uh, that some of these properties need. Uh, I will just ask you uh, one question the, on the agenda. It notes that uh, 
uh, this is Ross parking area phase one. Uh, why is it called phase one? What's the? Because I would expect at some point uh, the Messina lot, uh, the IHOP site, other parts of that okay. area uh, would be another phase. Would be the second phase. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You, Thank you, uh, Council Palmucci, Council Liang. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, Mayor. How are you? Good to see you, Council. You too. Um, I do want to echo some sentiments here and then share a little bit of my own as well. Um, and, you know, it's, it's really amazing to be able to look at this project and see um, what's to come. And I'm really excited to see also uh, the folks that will be coming and in, in, into that space. You know, I mean, we had Quincy Hospital for a long time, but that was the only name circling in the city. And now we have others that I think will bring um, a lot of attention to what we're doing here in the city. You know, I remember when I started interacting a lot um, with city government when I wasn't elected and it was because there was a huge hole in the ground across the street from my family's restaurant and it was awful. I mean, people were just like, are you open? Are you closed? What's going on? Um, and then coming in as a counselor, sort of detaching myself from that and sort of looking at it from this perspective now, I understand um, from my point of view anyways, how fragile all of this still is. Um, not to be negative Nancy or anything, but I look at other cities and towns and what they're doing. Um, I remember along with my colleagues where we were to get to this point. And, you know, while this is great and it really, you know, encourages me and excites me, I do also respect um, that this is going to be a process that we all are um, having to engage in very thoroughly and rigorously with. And you have a great team, I know, who um, really take this responsibility uh, without any light of heart, as we do too. And I know your name is on this, our names are on this, our decisions will impact physically what the city looks like. Um, for years to come. I mean, we don't have much public land left, you know, and so whatever we decide to do with it, we have to be really thoughtful and careful about that process. Again, it's a very fragile process, I think, and every step we take um, is going to be an important one. And so I'm happy to see that your team is here. I'm happy to see that you're invested in this process as much as we are. I really do look forward to the conversations and the number of meetings we're going to have around this because, again, every step and vote and decision and conversation we have around this um, is going to be, like you said, a lasting impact. It's not gonna be something that in five, 10 years time, we're gonna turn around and say, oh, we can you know, go back to the drawing board. I mean, these are decisions um, that will physically change the landscape of this city. And so I'm really excited, I'm really looking forward to it. I know that it wasn't easy to get to where you are today to present this LDA to us. I know, you know we've all been talking about it for quite some time, and so I'm grateful that uh, we are able to finally look at it now. I'm really excited to move forward with this. Um, but I do also appreciate, again, how fragile this process is. And, I look forward to you know making sure that we are all moving forward together with the same goal in mind. So thank you for your time and thank you for, for your work and your team's work on putting this together. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Any other Council Long? Good evening, Mayor. Thank you again for coming. Um, everybody's thanking you. I just have a couple of questions. So when we're discussing um, the three units that are gonna be built, the the um, the the hospital piece, the um, housing and then also the hotel are they and you say that's phase phase one and and are they going to be is just, are they going to be in piecemeal is it going to just go the 200,000 square feet for the for the hospital section first or are we talking about them in a full unit for 450,000 square feet or I know that uh, from Fox Rock's viewpoint the first priority is the medical office building <coughs> uh, but the hotel goes in tandem with it because mm -hmm. it's something that the medical office folks want to see as part of the downtown. So whether it's one building and then they start another or they're going to be all three under construction, that that will be worked out in the coming weeks and months. Uh, I don't know that that decision's been made yet. But the uh, the medical office building will be the first one in the ground. Okay. And I know we have a lot of work to do here before anything gets started, but the general contractor was Suffolk. That was, is that true? Suffolk been identified? Suffolk is at the table with Fox Rock, but I don't know that a final decision's been made. Okay, the reason why I bring that up is because in the former um, LDA for the downtown with Street Works, we did have a memorandum of understanding for labor and to have labor at the table, and we want to make sure that we are being able to employ and provide prevailing wages to our employees here in the city of Quincy. We have many laborers who work and live in the city of Quincy, and as we all like to say, we'd like to be able to work right here in our backyard. It makes it so much better if we can come to work when we're close to home. Um, the other question that I had is 
Um, out of curiosity, LBC, which is another developer in Quincy, just a year ago, they were considering um, potentially having a hotel, and they had an expert come in and tell us that the downtown was not ready for a hotel, and that was just one year ago. I guess one of the questions I have is what's changed tremendously since just a year ago, and that this hotel is not going to be ready potentially for a while. But I just I, I want to bring that up because the hotel is something that, as you said, is not gonna, it's going to go in a phase, and I'm just curious to know what that change was because we have multiple developments that are going on in the downtown and um, we've had one major development after another in the downtown and some of the research that was provided back, those are learnings that we should be able to find, um, to learn from, so I'm just curious. I'd like to make sure that these things are gonna happen. We've been um, at the table for a really long time and we really wanna see some successes here in the city of Quincy, but oftentimes, um, you know, the, the, we have to make sure that we're looking at all avenues and discussing those. So I'm just curious to know about that. Well, it has been a long time, Councillor, uh, mm -hmm. some 40 years uh, with the downtown, uh, and we've made tremendous progress. I say we, um, you know, those, uh, those decisions um, will come to light along the way. There's an interest in the developer to have a hotel there. Mm -hmm. uh, this developer is well healed. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, uh, the investment long term uh, and the uh, whole financing of these programs um, would be looked probably a little differently from this developer than LBC. Well, one would uh, hope. I just want to make sure that we're, we're, that we're checking on all those avenues. I don't mean to interrupt. I'm just, I'm just asking that question. Uh, Council, you can be assured that uh, every aspect of this has been looked at mm -hmm. 10 different ways from 10 different experts in every aspect of it, including that these things are financeable going forward. Uh, but I would reiterate that Fox Rock is unique in that um, it's no secret, uh, this is a company of Rob Hale, who loves the city, who has three buildings in North Quincy, employs almost 2,000 people here, uh, and, and wants to see this happen. So my guess it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I guess, I don't wanna guess, I wanna know it's gonna happen, but I appreciate that. Thank you very much. All set, Gonzo? Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions, comments? Um, you know, I know it was mentioned here already. I'll just sort of reiterate and thank you again, Mayor, for coming this evening to spend some time with us. We will have, I guess, uh, periods during meetings. Uh, what I've always found to be helpful is, you know, to engage with some of the team that's here this evening, some of the team that, uh, you know, was profiled on the sheet that we have in the PowerPoint deck, and um, they're always available to, uh, to answer questions and uh, take suggestions, and I know you've always availed yourself as well, Mayor, so we appreciate your uh, availability throughout the uh, deliberation and um, your team as well. So thank you all for coming. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, members of the council. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Number one. First item on the agenda. 2019-040, an appropriation for 61. Motion made by Council Kane to waive the reading. Uh, please, uh, forward to Finance Committee. Okay, uh, moving this to Finance Committee, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda, please, Madam Clerk. Number two, 2019-041 in order for Leanne to Motion made by agreement. Council Liang, Madam Clerk, to waive the reading on the motion, Council. Thank you. If, is it possible, actually, because I'm, I'm looking at this one and the one right after that as well, to move both to a joint um, reference for ordinance in downtown? Yes. So you put that in the form of a motion to refer to downtown as well as ordinance. Please. Right. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda, please, Madam Clerk. Number three, 2019-042 in order. Motion made by Council Yang to weigh the reading on the motion, Councilor. Sorry for the confusion. I'd also like to refer this to um, a joint committee for ordinance in downtown. Motion made to refer dual referral to both ordinance in downtown. All on those, Council Palmucci. I think there's a legitimate uh, argument that can be made that oversight would play a role in that. I'd ask it to be referred to all three committees. If that's the will of the body, so we have oversight, ordinance, as well as uh, downtown. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next, Next is step. number four, 2019-043, in order for a home group enact authorizing municipalities to permit Permit early voting for local elections. Councilor Pell Mucci. 
Good evening. Good evening. Uh, yes, that this uh, ordinance be referred to ordinance committee and community engagement. Motion made by Council Palmucci to refer the item to ordinance. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Next item on the agenda, please, Madam Clerk. Number five, 2019-044 gift for $1,000 from various donors for deer. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, um, please <laughs> accept the gift, motion to accept the gift, and please send thank you notes to all those who contributed. Motion made to approve by Council Kane, second by Council Bona. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Palmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Nine members. Nine members voting in the affirmative. The gift is received. Next item on the agenda, please, Madam Clerk. Next item is 6, 2019-045, a resolve seeking testimony we from the Native reason. American motion organizations. Motion made by Council Harris to waive the reading on the motion, Councilor. Thank you. Thank you, President Crow. Uh, Councilors, um, since 1991, a number of Indian tribal and Canadian First uh, Nation governments have come together to publicly express support for the preservation of the Indian burial ground sites on Dare Island, Long Island, and the other Boston Harbor Islands. And these governments have formed a joint intertribal representative, representative group um, to represent their concerns. And please excuse if I um, butcher this, but it's the Mu Hakonic Intertribal Committee on Dare Island, known as the MICDI. And since May of 2018, representation from the MICDI governments have publicly raised issues of concerns relating to potential Indian burial grounds on Long Island, both with officials from the city of Boston and the city of Quincy, and have particularly mentioned the past history, the needs to address it and preserve and protect any Indian burial ground sites on the island. And to better facilitate understanding of the concerns of the MICDI governments, as were reported last October in the Patriot Ledger, it hoped that the city of Quincy would hold a public hearing to allow government officials of the MICDI and the MNC governments and other supportive organization to article their concerns for the future protection of any Indian burial ground on Long Island, which might impact, which might be impacted from future construction activities on uh, and near to the island. I was asked by the representative for the MICDI to help facilitate the public hearing in front of this council. I ask and, um, and I am pleased uh, in the audience tonight, um, uh, Gary McCann, who is the uh, representative uh, of the Mohican Uk Intertribal Committee. See, I didn't even say it the same way the second time. Sorry, sorry guys. Uh, Jean-Luc Pierre, president of the Native American Indians Center of Boston and a board member of that same center Gary Holling Crane. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming here tonight and, and joining us. Um, so uh, I ask again for your support, and please pass this resolution so that another voice can be heard that the city of Boston is not doing what is right with the building of the Long Island Bridge and possible future development on Long Island. With that, I'd also like to, uh, I'd like to make an amendment, if I possibly could. I'm not sure if it's in order or out of order, but if this resolution passes, that the public hearing take place on April 1st, 2019, here at the Great Hall at 6 p.m., held by the Environmental and Public Health Committee. We can Right. I mean, if you want to memorialize it, that's certainly fine. Uh, under reports of, uh, excuse me, scheduling of meetings. Sure. 
we could tackle that tonight and make sure that it properly gets you know on the agenda. And it's it, the reason why I, I I did it that way because it's imperative that this uh, this group um, has the opportunity to appear in front mm -hmm. of us because I believe the city is a uh, city of Quincy is being heard on I think it's the 11th of April um, for the um, with MEPA for the uh, uh, the. Uh, test testimony for the MEPA uh, uh, brain freeze from the, all the snow. Um, our appeal, the appeal that the city of Quincy has put on is going to be heard on the 11th. I would love for those folks to be here so they can um, give their testimony in front of us and possibly the word can be heard that there's another group that doesn't want this to take place for, for almost the same reasons as all of us. So I just check have. with the clerk. Sure. You want this to go to environmental, and you chair the environmental yes. as well. Okay. Yes. So please. we can definitely schedule that meeting tonight. Very good. If you feel like you want to put that on the resolution, you can submit that. No, I'll, I'll just make make the motion to approve the resolution then. Okay. And Thank refer you. it to environmental. Environmental on the motion, Councilor. Uh, thank you, and I thank the distinguished uh, gentleman for being here tonight. Um, I. Uh, We'll second the motion uh, and also ask for a dual recommendation to oversight committee. I think a, a, uh, something is um, significant to this, deserves a committee of the whole as well. It's certainly up to uh, uh, Councillor Harris how he wishes to proceed, but I certainly make uh, the oversight committee uh, available to him. So I'd ask for a dual recommendation uh, to both committees and I would second the motion. You all set with that, Councillor? Absolutely. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it, thank you. Next item on the agenda, please, Madam Clark. Number seven. Oh, excuse me. 2019-046, a resolve yeah. update on pending legal and future Motion made actions. by Councillor Harris to waive the reading on the motion, Councillor. <clears throat> Again, Council is the same, basically the same, uh, we're talking about the same problem <clears throat> or a fight. Uh, this resolution asks for the mayor to provide this council and members of the public an update on all pending matters relative to the Long Island Bridge on a date following the public hearing on the Chapter 91 license application, which was filed by the City of Boston with the Department of the Environmental Protection. Uh, recently, the mayor and myself have already sent uh, an informational letter. Um, you folks have it. And um, you folks, I sent it to you uh, through the, through the, um, through uh, Jen. Uh, you folks got it on Friday, um, and so didn't over 4,000 residents of Ward 6. Um, I've also placed it on the city website under the Ward 6 page for all of the city to be able to access it because this proposal, proposed project will affect many neighborhoods beyond Ward 6 in Quincy. Um, with that, I make a motion to approve. Do you also want to put it in a committee for a hearing for the update? Um, this is pretty cut and dry. It's, it's, this is pretty cut and dry. It just says that the mayor will, will, will come before us or the mayor's uh, person will come before us, give us an update yep. of what took place uh, after the, um, the hearing, okay. the public hearing Absolutely. that takes place due to the Chapter 91 uh, application that was filed. Perfect. So you and I will work to get an update on the agenda post. Absolutely. Meeting. Absolutely. Uh, motion made by Council Harris, second by Council Mahoney. Did you want to speak on the? No. no. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Hughes. Yes. Councilor Leanne. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Nine members. Nine members. The resolution passes. Okay, that is the regularly scheduled agenda for this evening. I'm going to recess the city council meeting. We're going to go. Mr. President. Yes, sir. On the matter of going back uh, to 2019-041, uh, the LBA for Ross parking area, phase one, um, 
I just want to make a plea to my colleagues that I think this should also go into finance committee. Uh, this is a, a financial transaction that's governed by a contract. And so um, it's not necessarily in, in order, but I also think it should be still in downtown uh, committee. So if we could, if I could amend or make a, you know, a motion to, to change that to be finance in downtown committee. And where else was it going? Ordinance? ordinance. It was originally proposed to go into ordinance. And I'm, I'm suggesting it goes into, because uh, there's, there's monies to be exchanged in this transaction um, to go forward. Maybe so. put it on as a alternative committee, and then it goes to all three, and then the three of you can work yeah, out. Yeah, whoever you want to do it. But maybe. I just think it should go into finance. OK. Um, so trying to think procedurally, Madam Clerk. That's been passed, so. He makes a motion to bring it back out and include the finance committee. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 On, we're adding finance, right? So it'll be correct. finance, ordinance, and downtown, correct? Correct. Okay. Right? Thank you. Welcome. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have. All right. So at this point, that concludes the regularly scheduled city council meeting agenda. We're gonna recess, go back into ordinance, and then we'll come back and finish up the tail end of the council agenda. All right. All right, I would like to call back into order the Monday, March 4th meeting of the Quincy City Council Ordinance uh, Committee. I don't have to do a roll call again, do I? Okay, great. Um, we last left off, um, Council McCarthy, you were first up, so I'm gonna go ahead and Go to you if that's right. All right, great. Um, Good evening, Mr. Fassies. Uh, in regards to this item, and um, I always commend uh, pa Councilor Palmucci for bringing things uh, to light to kick around and talk about. But um, I, I had questions, and I, and I talked to the planning director earlier tonight about this um, increase with 10 or more dwelling units. And uh, to what uh, the President uh, Kroll had to say earlier, um, in the amount of activity that goes on, uh, let's, let's forget about the downtown for a second, but you brought up a good point, Jim, in regards to that, that, that circle uh, that Councilor Hughes has, that I have, um, Councilor Kroll has, et cetera, uh, Councilor Palmucci also. Uh, there are those neighborhoods that are still neighborhoods and they're zoned probably not the way we'd like them to be zoned at times, but the developers, the folks that go out and buy that property have the right to go in and come before you with a plan. And sometimes I find it that the smaller plans are more difficult than the larger plans. The larger plans uh, it's what it is. We might not like the 52 units. We might want it to get it down to 42. But some of the smaller plans that come in for three units or four units that try to get forced into an area uh, that might not be accepting in regards to traffic and commercial uh, use and activity, uh, sometimes to me, uh, in, in my experience over the last 14 months, are more of an issue. I'd like to see us just stay, uh, from, from your testimony, just to stay right where we are. Leave it the way it is. Um, I think that the ward counselor, counselors, I'll speak just for myself, but uh, should be able to take a look at something. I think some of them are an easy, okay, that, that fits, that makes sense. And... Um, some of them with this three units, it should go down to two units. And um, I know I've dealt with uh, you folks a real lot over the past 14 months, and along with Marty Akins and the zoning board a lot. I don't miss many, and um, I see things that I'm glad I got involved in, even the small units, because it was going to affect the neighborhood. So um, just on that, I, I, I think that, you know, when we take a look at this, my thoughts are to leave it alone. It sounds like your workload is manageable, as you said, Jim, in regards to this group of three, four, five, um, and 18 over the last six years. It sounds like the planning board also might have gotten their two cents in with you in regards to moving this. And 
and I would stay right where we are, let the ward councilors get involved, deal with you. I know you'll um, point us in the right direction or tell us if yeah, things have increased and I think we need to change it, but um, I think we're in a good place right now so we can get involved and, and make some good calls for the neighborhood. Thank you. And Council Mahoney? Hi, Jim. How are you? Um, so we should have talked faster so you could have, you wouldn't have to come back tonight but you, after the meeting, but that's okay. So earlier in the evening, you were talking about how um, there are ni there's 19 projects in front of you. Or is it 19 projects that are uh, smaller units? Since 03. Since 03, three, smaller. Three to, five. three to five. And then you also mentioned, um, you know, that depending on where a developer was um, in the process, if there was multiple things that were going on, that there's waivers that they can ask for. Mm -hmm. So the thing that I had the question for then, of, of the ones that are in front of you, how many of those had received or asked for waivers? And then are those waivers given out apples to oranges in the sense that? Yeah. Because I mean, you're saying that in some cases it might be a traffic study they don't have to do, in other cases it might be a a shadow thing that they don't have to do you know it seemed when you were am I, and if I'm taking this wrong Jim when you were explaining it sure. to us let me know if I'm taking this out of context but it, it seemed like you could you know you could kind of you know suggest that there's certain things that you didn't have to do or if there was a study and there was three buildings built on the Willard Street maybe you wouldn't have to do a traffic study because you already had a traffic study yeah. is, is that what you said yeah well, what I'm saying is there are different areas where um, I mean, a shadow study, a wind study, usually calls for a much taller building, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the wind mm -hmm. and the shadow. It's going to block the sun from something next to it. If a project isn't that tall, doesn't have that, that height, and has very solid setbacks, um, you're not as concerned with a shadow or a wind study. Um, our traffic engineer will look at every plan, whether it is, uh, and that's a point I should make, our traffic engineer, our engineering team uh, for, uh, you know, from DPW, water, sewer, drain, um, they're always going to look at these projects for mm -hmm. us. When a request for actual, you know, an entire waiver of site plan is very rare. But you, you made it suggested that it maybe wasn't a complete site waiver. That it was it was more that they can ask proportion, proportional waivers or is, yes, is it, they can they can ask for a waiver of any number of conditions. Uh -huh. uh, generally speaking, um, is that I mean, this is and it's kind of a, it's just opening up a question for me. Is that disclosed in the site plan review when you're when yes. you're, you're that you're yeah. so so are you saying for the 19 that you have, none of, none of those asked for any kind of waiver? I, I couldn't say that none of them have asked for a waiver. I would say that many of them may have asked for more of the minor relief type waivers, like wind and, uh, wind and shadow is mm -hmm. the one that they ask for because generally the massing of the project is going to identify that. But you Traf did traffic you, is a lot more different. Yeah, it, you did say different. earlier though, and and because I wrote it down, because I, I, I you said that you know if there's three studies that are going on and a, a building goes up on Willow Street, they won't necessarily. I use Willow Street because you said Willow Street. Yeah, That's yeah, sure. um, That they wouldn't necessarily have to do the traffic study because you already had the traffic study done from the previous one. Okay, I just so, wanted clarification. So a traffic study um, has has different degrees okay mm -hmm. a traffic review basically looks at conditions mm -hmm. that um, generally speaking if you have a small project pick a number five units uh, five units is generally going to generate approximately one point depending on if it's a, uh, a res b at least 1.5 parking spaces per unit so now we're up at 7.5, generally they'll round up to eight parking spaces. Um, when you have eight cars coming and going from a project, it is not going to impact the traffic dramatically on, a, on, on an area. Now obviously, if you have many more uh, units uh, or a, a larger project, 
there will be more, more cars. Um, so the level of traffic review, we may ask them to give us a traffic report, a full-blown traffic study on something. I'll use Whitwell uh, because you were at that meeting. Uh, there's going to be a full-blown traffic study on something of that nature because of, of proposed numbers of cars. Mm -hmm. That's really what I'm saying. There's, there, there is uh, incremental levels of review required on projects that are much smaller, which is what we're talking about uh, here. Uh, on the larger projects, we very rarely will, uh, well, first of all, we rarely waive site plan review. I guess that's my concern, because when we're talking about this and you mentioned waivers, it sounds as though maybe the smaller projects would actually receive the waivers. And it's out of curiosity, I was just wondering of the 19, did any of those? I mean, I know you don't have it with you tonight. It's just because you mentioned it. Yeah, sure. Um, it makes sense that, you know, if you're having, you know, like a, the, the largest development in the city of Quincy would be the hospital site, and that would definitely have to have a traffic study because it's going to have a major impact. Full traffic study. Um, I think, you know, for me, you know, we have developments happening all over in neighborhoods, and one street could pop up a 10 unit, another street could pop up another 10 units and you know we could be within two blocks of each other or even right on the same street mm -hmm. and each time I've been to planning or meetings and I've been told zero traffic impact because it's looking at just that site when in fact we have clusters of things that are happening that are changing potentially changing you know traffic in our city I asked but I really what it comes down to is what we're talking about tonight is should we raise it to 10 should we take it from three to five and what's your what's the weight of how we're weighting these things and the fact that you mentioned waivers it just made me kind of perked up my ears to question how we're looking at those things and what if it if it's looked at evenly across the board and a bigger concern I guess was when you said if there's a lot happening in an area it might not be in their smaller units but those smaller units could have add up to the larger units too. So I think holistically when we look at things just as one-offs, we can say, sure, it's not going to have an impact, but then when you have three or four in a neighborhood, it could have a major impact. Because, Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, so the concern, there's concerns that I have about it too, and I kind of go back and forth because mostly you need to have, if you need to have a variance, you're going to have to go before the variance committee and, you know, you're still going to have the public process, but then at the same time, when you're working, I'm looking for you to honestly tell us, you know, if, if those 19 that you are looking at, if, and you don't know, and that's a key element because you said some of them will ask for waivers, if they're asking for a full waiver, are we talking about 19 or now are we talking about 10 that was done in the last six years? I don't know. Yeah, That's something the, that the, I would let need me, you to tell let me, me. Let me try to clarify a little bit. Um, an entitlement attorney may come forth with a request mm -hmm. for a waiver. Uh, they are not often uh, granted. Um, and that's a, so your waiver can start with entire site plan review. They can ask for a waiver. Uh, that rarely occurs. And that rarely occurs because uh, generally speaking, um, and again, everything is relative to size. Everything is relative to, as you pointed out, what else is happening in a particular neighborhood, mm -hmm. what's gone on in the neighborhood prior. So we do have the ability to go back and look at the collective and say, to your point, you know, this has happened here, this has happened here, this has happened here by themselves. No big deal, but when you add them together, the collective is something that concerns us. And uh, do we do that? I'm just out of curiosity. Do we do, we do that? I'm just, I don't know. Yes. If we do. Okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. All right. And again, um, the, what I guess you really have to understand is there are different pieces that aren't as impactful. Shadow studies, and I, I go back to them because they're the kind of, they're the ones that are, are very rarely enforced. Even when we do a full site plan review, Mm -hmm. uh, someone is still going to look at the shadow. Someone is still going to look at the wind. Someone is going to look at that internally. Uh, if our engineers and our traffic engineers uh, or our civil engineers say, I don't like this, I want more, then we just produce and ask the peer review to do more mm -hmm. on this. And they have the time and they have the effort. And again, the proponent of the project is paying for that review. So we aren't hesitant to use it. It is rare that you will see a full um, uh, 
uh, waiver on, on site plan. Um, don't think I've done one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's three and a half years in this position. Um, there are a few of them that I have said, yeah, we can dispense with this. After speaking to the traffic engineer, mm -hmm. we can dispense after speaking to our civil engineers. So it, it's, it's never something, well, that just feels right. We won't review it. That's not the way. Yeah, no, I just want a clarification. Yeah, I mean, and, you, and I you, think that's a good point you made, so I wanted to You know, I, clear it, on the, that. the question came up because, because you mentioned it and, and not knowing oh, the uh, volume sure. that you have. So the, the next question would be kind of, I don't know if it's, 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 it's really, if, if this was to go from, it's currently, it's, if it's anything less than three, it doesn't have to go to a site plan, is that? That's correct. Three, or le uh, three we see, two we don't, ones we don't. Okay. So, and, and you think 10 is too high and you think five might be a happy medium, is that? I, I, well, I said five is, I would die on that hill. I think five is absolutely required, yeah. five and above. I think is is required, um, as has been mentioned before tonight. There yeah, no, I, I asked that question because you know is is if if we make it if we go from three to five, is it just is it? I, and this is just a question that I'm going to ask. Does it make it easier for the person who's trying to make the development, even though they need the variance to potentially build on the smaller lot, or you know is it or is it protecting? Then I'm asking you for your your. Well, the variance is is going to come from the the the. Uh, the, the Board of Appeals, obviously, mm. which is the Zoning Board of Appeals, on uh, those things that are, you know, setback related mostly. That's really where they start. Um, but as far as, you know, what we are looking at, um, some, some three unit projects are simply easier than mm. others because there's the adequate the, the variance in lot size is what I really have to look at. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to build, and again, just go by code, right. um, a single family home requires 7,600 uh, square feet mm -hmm. of a lot. Are there buildings being built on lots smaller than that in the city? Yes. Are multis being built on that size lot? Yes, they can be. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, um, it's important just to note that, that that's happening in the Zoning Board of Appeals. You'd have to get that, you know, from uh, the ZBA. Uh, where we are looking at these projects, um, generally, it's, it, it's the real estate itself. It's the street it's on. It's the underground conditions, as Councilor Curl said. There are areas where you have a lot more shale. West Quincy, mm -hmm. up uh, on the other side of the expressway, there's a lot of rock up there. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've seen projects come before us, and the hardship that is being asked is based on topographical issues that they have. They'd like to move it over here on the site, which might give them a little bit less of a setback than if they planted the house or the, the building right in the middle of the site. But the middle of the site is problematic based on the soil conditions underneath the building. So each is an independent call. Each one of them is reviewed by the, the city's, uh, the, the city's uh, engineers, also the health department. They also participate. Uh, so we, we look at each and every one of these projects. Uh, on a site plan right now, that's all I've known is three and up. Mm -hmm. um, so, am I comfortable with three and up? Yes. Can we can we sustain the workload? Yes. Am I, you know, fatigued by doing threes and fours? No. Okay. Um, that's 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 really where I'm coming from. There are there are some, as I, I use the word, there are doozies. There are some small ones, threes and fours that are are very challenging. And, um, and, and so I say that. Um, will, will we always look at these projects, whether they are being looked by both permitting authorities or one? Yes, even on, I mean, on a one, if it's in the wrong place, mm -hmm. obviously the ZBA is gonna have all these same questions. Right. The ZBA is also gonna look at, you know, is there an ability to drain this project on site, so. 
So can I ask, and this is my last question, and this is partly educational too for anybody that might be listening at home. So when a developer wants to develop something between, let's just say it's five units just for the sake of purposes, and it comes to site planning and you get the approval and then they're going to zoning. Are they fully approved when they go to zoning from, from you guys? It can go in either direction. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they'll come to they'll go to zoning first mm -hmm. because they know that they have a lot of challenges okay. from a zoning point of view. Mm -hmm. And if they go to zoning first, they don't have to pay for a site plan. Mm -hmm. uh, they they don't have to pay for a peer review. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they may go in that direction if they are confident and they are experienced builders mm -hmm. with experienced support staff, attorneys and engineers and architects, you know, they may choose to get to whichever board they can get to first. Get because, on first, yeah. Yeah, to get okay. on first. And then, um, how, and just out of curiosity, for maybe a smaller unit versus, this is just out of, just for educational purposes, so what would be the cost for a site plan review for somebody who's developed? $5,000 is the, usually the number we start with on a bigger project. It could, you know, up so on the So somebody doing a five, a, a five, you know, with three, un three units to five units is $5,000, and somebody doing something much bigger might be much higher. That's okay. correct. So it's basically based on the number of yeah. units, It's based on that, and also if someone came on a project and they had, uh, then they redesigned a number of times, and they've expended the monies that the uh, outside review engineering firm had, mm -hmm. they may have to come back and give us additional funds because it's been uh, it, it's been to one meeting, then two meetings. Generally, I only get two visits out of the peer review at a. So if somebody had an architect and fired the architect and brought a different architect. Yes, in, then they may have to you know put in more start, than the five thousand dollars. They have to go through the the, the the process twice. All right, and and those are just purely because I know it's like it's a lot of information that we're discussing about here tonight. Yes. Um, some have more depth than others, but people at home sometimes don't always know um, when we kind of brush over subject matters that they're not quite sure what we're talking about and how it's going to impact them positively or negatively. So I think it's important that we talk about those things. If you could, though, Jim, I'd be curious, just my, out of my curious nature of the 19, if you could just let me know. Um, I'd be happy Yeah, that would be helpful, just just so I can we, see. We'll too. go back and see if uh, what Only if it's not too much work. I'd, be, I'd just yeah. be curious, though. That's Thank you very much. That's not a problem at all. Does anybody else have any other? I have some questions, but I want to defer to my colleagues first. If anybody else has any questions they want to ask, no. Okay. Um, so I wanted to. How do we get to the number three to begin with? I mean, did how do how do we get to three to begin with when this order was written? Um, I did a little bit of research uh, when uh, Dr. Brabowski came before us. A member of the uh, council requested that that number be reset at three. Uh, and was, when was this? It was uh, Councillor uh, 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 Ramondi in uh, Ward 2. Do you know when that was? Yes, uh, when, literally when, the, uh, when it was before us in 2007. It was 2007 that it was set at 3? Okay. Yeah. Um, and so we've been doing it from 3 since that time. Yeah. Um, do you know what it was before then, or if there was any legislation written around this before 2007? I don't, I, I don't have an answer for you. I'm sure I can find out. But okay, I, I'm just I curious to see, again, uh, sort of different experiences that um, we've had as a city, if we've had different numbers that we were working with, what kind of results do we see from that? Sure. Um, and I know my colleagues, I talked to a little bit about process and, and what that would look like, but just to be very clear with um, how this currently works, right? So somebody comes to you with a proposal as a developer for a project, um, and it's three or more units, then it automatically goes to planning board because of the site plan review, correct? Yes. Okay, and so if we change this to five, if somebody comes and says, okay, I want to develop a property for three units, they no longer have to go through planning board at yes, all? Yes, that's correct. At all, right? So what are the, no so whether, what are the steps then, I guess I would say? Um, if they didn't have to go through planning, they could just start building? They would go or? to the zoning board of appeals and it would be handled uh, by the zoning board. Okay, but at that time, we still have an opportunity for community meetings, for engagement um, from the public. Notices will still go out to folks as well, as it currently does, I suppose, for yes. units that are less than three right now, right? That's correct. Um, but it does not come to planning board at That's all correct. at that point. Okay. Um, in the projects that you were talking about that have come through planning board for site plan review, do you recall just um, off the top of your head from your experience, like what are the most dramatic and significant changes that you guys have made through the site plan review process? 
Uh, definitely parking. Parking. Uh, parking and, uh, you know, there are many folks that will come in to us and say, for instance, uh, we feel this is transit oriented. And then when we go and check the how far away from a T station it really is, uh, we don't think that it's really as transit oriented as they do. And they would be looking or seeking a lower parking ratio where in, you know, Quincy Center has its own zoning district, but I'm gonna go outside, which is you know, currently about, I think it's 5.6 per, per unit. But when you get out into the neighborhoods, you're looking at usually 1.5. It can get as high as 1.75, which we try to round up, and we can get as high as two per unit if it's coming over from say, a switch from commercial C, uh, uh, or you know, business C over to residential. B. So that's one of the areas. And the other one is always going to be drainage. Um, there are some folks that will originally come in and say, this is what we have. And uh, we ask, you know, uh, our engineer goes out to the site and says, I don't feel this is going to drain with the amount of drainage improvements that they're proposing. We'd like to see more uh, retention on site to assure that the water will not be running off the site to a budding site. So those are the two major issues that we would see in the uh, planning. And do you see that, so, and I know you're not here representing the zoning board, but do you see those two, uh, you said parking and drainage, those are the first two that came to mind, but do those then also get addressed in the zoning board if you have projects right now that currently are two units or less, right? And they're going to zoning board for whatever reason. I mean, do you find that those issues are being addressed in zoning? Well, two units as well? or less, they they handle on they handle on site. But I do see everything that goes through the uh, the zoning board of appeals. I'm copied on everything. Mm -hmm. If something jumped off at me and I've had questions, uh, I just pick up the phone and I speak to Mr. Duca and I say, you know, just curious about this. It abuts a project that uh, you know may have more units that I am looking at. So I can't work in a vacuum. I want to make sure that everything that goes through uh, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals, I'm copied on as well. And I look at every address and say, does this line up with anything that's before us? So well, we're pretty good about going back and forth on it. Um, is there a possibility that there'd be a disagreement between uh, the zoning board and uh, the, or basically the zoning board and the planning board. Rarely uh, have I run into a situation of that nature, and it might be a misunderstanding on either board's case. So then we have that discussion and we come back and we talk to the proponent after we speak to each other and say, we do feel that you need to bring this before planning for a little bit more of a view. And that's that's how that usually works. Yeah, and but, I understand that each case is obviously you know unique on its own, and so you know the conversations that you have between planning and zoning might be different. I'm just trying to get a, an understanding of again what layers are sort of overlapping here, and making sure that there's multiple bites at the apple, right, yes. to address each project as it comes, and understanding sort of the inner working relationships between each of the different bodies, whether it's the community meeting, the planning board, or the zoning board. Sort of again how those. Um, areas overlap and then op what opportunities are there because of the overlap to make sure that residents concerns are heard issues are addressed um, and that developers are making sure that you know their feeds are yeah, the, the process the, is, the process works very well um, yeah. and, and uh, I, I will tell you that uh, I've had an excellent experience working with the zoning board on anything that comes <laughs> comes our way and uh, oftentimes I'll pick up the phone and I'll speak to Mr. Duca who Kind of has the same role I do to the plant to the uh, zoning board of appeals, uh, and and we discuss these items as as they come up. And uh, again, uh, both the planning uh, department and the building department are very responsive to the counselors. Uh, if a counselor picks up the phone and says, "Jim, this is what I'm hearing from the neighborhood. This is something we need some clarity on." We go right to it and we present to that counselor and say, this is what we've learned about that. Sometimes, uh, you know, people that are abutting a project um, will come in with some local knowledge that, quite frankly, you wouldn't see. You know, I had a lady come uh, and said, we used to have a rowboat in that, we 
used to, you know, when things got tough, we used to have a rowboat, and the kids used to play in a rowboat in an area where there were drainage issues. And that's something that we can look into, you know. So uh, we're, we, we work very closely, and it's, uh, you know, I talked to Jay three times today. That's an average. On, on yeah, no, he's day. very responsive, so I can see how that's the case. Yeah. Have you seen any projects that have, um, you know, come across your path or sort of have you been involved in any projects that are two units or less? No, that's not our purview other than. But I'm just saying again, like circumstantially, right, if something comes up or something happens, there by no means or any reason would it come in front of you as the, the, right. the ordinance is currently the, written. The only time there'd be interaction is if one of that, that two unit or, or, or one unit abutted a project or was, you know, there was one home in between the two of them. And I'm, I've learned something in my process uh, that gives me concern on drainage and you know we'll have that discussion so that's that's but very rarely will I be asked to participate in a uh, in, in anything uh, I get to look at them but uh, there's the process is pretty solid anything one unit or two units is taken care of uh, directly by the plant and by the uh, ZBA and by the uh, the building inspector again it's what goes inside the building is really also the building inspector's world. We're the outside and the, and the lot and mm -hmm. the site. Okay. Thank you. Um, those are all the questions that I have. If, if my colleagues have any other questions, again, I would defer to them. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, Jim, thank you for taking the time oh, my uh, to, to present to us and answer our questions. You know, I think that this conversation is something that um, is really important. You know, I mean, 12 years time, a lot has changed in 12 years, a lot of change in two years right here in the city. And, um, you know, these laws have been written over time. And that's the nice thing about um, sort of how we can operate as a body is that things can pop up in ordinance committee that we can amend as things are changing in the city, right? And so having this conversation about the process of development, I think is really important, um, regardless of where this goes or how it moves. Um, again, I think to come together as a collective and have conversations and open dialogue about how construction and development operates in the city is really important um, to, again, see if, you know, something should be changed or tightened up, something should not be changed at all, that's fine, but mm -hmm. I think this conversation is really important, so I appreciate you taking the time um, to come out tonight. We will keep this in committee, um, and at this point, I will close the ordinance committee meeting at 8.59 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. Call the uh, regularly scheduled city council meeting back to order. We left off on item number six, which is the approval of previous meeting minutes from February 4th. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, communications and reports from the mayor, other city officers, and city boards. Madam Clerk. I do have a couple of communications this evening. Um, one to be added into the record from Fox Rock this evening in regards to Council of Palmucci's Act for Pre-Development and Market Expenses. Please find enclosed a summary of the out-of-pocket pre-development and marketed expenses occurred pursuant to Section 3 of the agreement. It's all in your packet. Thank you kindly. Is that all, Madam Clerk? Uh, no, we do okay. have um, some new traffics to refer to Ordinance Committee for Advertising. Ward 1, Council McCarthy, add handicap parking on 81 Taffrail Road. Ward 4, Council Palmucci, add handicap parking on 92 Wren Terrace. Ward 6, Council Harris, add two hour parking on the north side of Spruce Street, Hancock Street to Oak Ave. Ward 6, add two hour parking on the west side of Burke Street, Hollis Ave to Glover Road. Add two hour parking on the south side of Hollis Ave, Hancock Street to Faxon Road, and add no parking on the north side of Hollis Ave, Hancock Street to Faxon Road. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Any unfinished business in preceding meeting? Seeing none. Uh, reports of committees in the good chairwoman of the Ordinance Committee has several. Council Liang. Thank you. Several, I think, is an understatement for 15, but I talk really fast. So I'm going to try to get through this. So first one, um, and these are all in Ward 6. The first is 2019-017, add no parking on the east side of Newberry Ave, East Quantum Street to Sagmore Street. I remove positive recommendation. 
might feel like an auctioneer, you know. Yes. Thank you. Next is 2019-018. Add two-hour parking on the west side of Newbury. I have 70 feet north of East Quantum Street to Sagamore Street. I move positive recommendation. Councilor Harris. Councilor Hughes. Yes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Pamukji. Yes. President Kroll. Yes. Nine members voting in the affirmative. <laughs> Next is 2019-019. Add 15-minute parking on the west side of Newbury Ave, 20 feet north of East Guantanamo Street to 70 feet north of East Guantanamo Street. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes, sorry. Council yes. McCarthy. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes, nine members. Thank you. Um, next is Council Order 2019-020. Motion made by Council Harris. Did you want to speak on the motion? Nope. OK. Thank you. Positive recommendation from the Ordinance Committee. OK. Motion made by Council Yang. Second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Hughes. Yes. Councilor Yang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Council Pamukji. Yes. President Kroll. Yes. Nine members. Nine members. Next, we have 2019-021. Motion made by Council Harris to waive the reading. Okay, move positive recommendation. Council A moves positive recommendation. Second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Next, we have 2019-022. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Okay, 2019-023. Okay, move positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Okay, 2019-024. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Liang, second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Nine members. Nine members. Okay, next we've got 2019-02. <laughs> Zero two six. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pelmucci. Yes. President Kroll. Yes. Nine members. Nine members. Okay, next 2019-027. We have positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Belmucci. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Thank you. Next we have 2019-028. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Council Kane. Yes. Council DeBona. Yes. Council Harris. Yes. Council Hughes. Yes. Council Liang. Yes. Council Mahoney. Yes. Council McCarthy. Yes. Council Pamukji. Yes. President Crow. Yes. Nine okay, we've got 2019-029. And we pause the recommendation. Motion made by Council Yang, second by Council Harris. Any discussions? 
Seeing none, Madam Clark. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Hughes. Yes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. Yes. President Kroll. Yes. Okay, we've got 2019-030. Any positive recommendation? Motion made by Councilor Yang, second by Councilor Harris. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clark. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor DeBona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Hughes. Yes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. President Kroll. Yes. Nine members. Nine members. Last but not least, 2019-031. I move positive recommendation. Motion made by Councilor Yang, second by Councilor Harris. Any discussion? Seeing none, Madam Clark. Councilor Kane. Yes. Councilor Devona. Yes. Councilor Harris. Yes. Councilor Hughes. Yes. Councilor Liang. Yes. Councilor Mahoney. Yes. Councilor McCarthy. Yes. Councilor Palmucci. President Crow. Yes. Nine members. Any other reports of committees this evening, Councilors? Seeing none. But Petitions, memorials, and remonstrance. Councilor DeBona. Thank you, Mr. President. Just want to say um, just a congratulations to uh, Ambassador, Public Service of the City, Jimmy Huey. Um, Jimmy had a baby um, with Lin Lindsay on um, February 14th. He's been hounding me to make sure I told everybody. So, um, Juliana, welcome to uh, the world. and. Congratulations to Jimmy Huey. Thank you, Councillor. Any other yep. petitions, memorials, or remonstrance? I got, if I could. Okay, please. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I, I was thinking a little bit back of last meeting and um, thought about this a lot in the last term. Um, just want to get a, maybe a quick discussion, if, if you want to. If you don't want to, we can move on. Um, well, this isn't... The no, discussion well component. I just want to just it be a remonstrance it's remonstrance is this trust me you'll hear um, just just sometimes when we we had our last ordinance meeting we just it was it just uh, it got a little long and sometimes folks want to speak upon how, how long they want to speak I don't know if it's in front of this body previously to me or to this body presently that is there a time limit upon which how long people can speak for and the reason why I ask this is you can get your points across in about 10 minutes sometimes 15 maybe 20 but sometimes I think it'd be to the best interest of the body that if someone wants to speak for a certain amount of time that they could maybe yield um, so that other people can speak and then go back on Yep. Okay. Thank you. Did, did you get that from the? Minutes. Yep. Can I? Can I? Can you read it? Into, if, if, sorry, I just. I'm sorry. Mic'd up the clerk. So. Thank you. Yes. If you um, could, Madam Madam Clerk. Yep. Uh, rule ten is uh, debate lim limitation, and members shall be allowed to speak on any one subject for a period not to exceed 15 minutes for matters coming before the council, in first instance not being referred to a committee or required a question and answer period. And foregoing limitations shall not apply. A member shall not be allowed, shall be allowed an additional five minutes to speak after every other member choosing to speak has spoken. So you get 15 minutes and then if you, if you can yield and then come back for five more minutes. That's is right. That, is that correct? Yes. Okay, I, I mean, I don't wanna hound on anybody particularly up here and point any fingers, it's just, we're going into budget season, and I, I know people want to speak, but sometimes it just it gets carried on a little bit longer than it should, and I feel that it takes away from the other colleagues on that, that serve up here. So I was looking for that little blue book. I asked Mr. <laughs> Council McCarthy a second ago, where's that blue book? So I, I thank you, for Madam Clerk, for reading that into the record, and um, it, it's no knock on anybody up here. I just wanted to um, maybe get that out here. And Thank you, Council. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, any other petitions, memorials, or remonstrances? Motions, orders, and resolutions. Scheduling of committee meetings, and our next meeting is 
March 18th, which is a Monday, Councillor Elmochi. You went too fast. Whoa. You went too fast in the last one. I have a, 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 an order to introduce. Uh, I want to introduce an amendment to uh, Section 7, the special residential regulations of the zoning code that I pass up to Jen. I ask that it be um, uh, given a number and put on the agenda for the next meeting for introduction. This would specify the definition of affordable housing so there wouldn't be any confusion as to what inclusionary housing zone applies to and what it means across the city. Yes, sir. That item will be referred to the next uh, agenda meeting and um, placed on file. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so again, back to scheduling of meetings. Our next meeting is, uh, what did I say, March 18th, Monday. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Council Harris. I work for the guy. I'd like to uh, the environmental uh, meeting with the, uh, the Native American group, uh, April 1st, 6 o'clock, public right. hearing. <laughs> Hey, councils, that'll be on the night of a regularly scheduled city council meeting as well. So we'll, um, we'll be in the room for environmental at 6 p.m. And we'll make sure to circulate all the, uh, all the dates in a, in a singular document. Any other, you're all set? Yes, thank Great. you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other scheduling of meetings? Okay, with that comes a motion adjourn. to adjourn. So moved. Close the city council meeting at 9.15. <laughs>